Today we're going to talk about SARS-CoV-2 strain evolution and specifically we're going to cover the B117 strain that is currently circulating within the UK. Let's talk first about what exactly is strain evolution. So all viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, will slowly change and evolve over time. And this is something that is not only expected, it's something that the scientific community has been tracking from the beginning. The original SARS-CoV-2 virus that was identified in Wuhan, China back in 2019 was immediately sequenced so that we could understand what the full RNA genome sequence of that virus was. Since then, all over the world, scientists have been taking surveillance sequencing samples where they take samples from an individual who's tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, and they've been taking those samples and sequencing them for the whole genome of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This kind of surveillance allows us to track then how the virus is changing over time, especially as different outbreaks happen in different regions of the world. So this is something that has been happening over the course of the global pandemic, and we have a pretty good picture of which strains are currently in which regions of the world and where they may have come from. Now let's talk specifically about B117. B117 is the name of a strain that is currently predominant within the UK. It was first sequenced within samples from patients in September, but very quickly by the end of December, B117 had become the most frequently seen strain within the southeast of the UK. This made the scientific community wonder, does B117, has it acquired any new properties that has allowed it to so quickly become the most predominant strain within the UK? What we know about B117 is that it has a total of 23 changes between the B117 SARS-CoV-2 genome and the 2019 SARS-CoV-2 genome. Of these 23 changes, there are many that we think are not very significant. And in fact, in general, many strains do have changes from the original SARS-CoV-2 sequence. However, there are some changes within the spike protein that have made the scientific community wonder if there are new properties. Specifically, if you remember, the spike protein is the protein on the SARS-CoV-2 viral particle that is responsible for the binding and infecting of a host cell. So it's a very important piece of the virus. The B117 strain has a couple of mutations within the spike protein that are of significance. One of these is called N501Y. The N501Y variant is thought to increase the binding between the SARS-CoV-2 protein and the human receptor. So this particular variant is interesting because it does potentially make the spike protein of B117 bind more readily and better to the human receptor, which might make this virus more transmissive. N501Y is also a variant that is been found in a different strain that is currently circulating within South Africa that has been shown to be also more transmissive. So that's the other significance of this particular variant, which is a part of the B117 strain. Another variant that you may have heard about is a variant called 6970-DEL. This is the deletion of the 69th and 70th amino acid within the spike protein. This is an interesting variant because it begs the question, if you delete two consecutive amino acids out of the spike protein, are you significantly changing the shape and structure of the spike protein enough that it becomes difficult to recognize by antibodies? This is interesting because when we think about vaccine development, we know that the spike protein has been the predominant strategy that vaccine developers have been using to develop vaccines. Specifically, the mRNA vaccines developed by Pfizer and Moderna are both using a full-length spike protein, introducing that into your cells and using that to induce immunity against the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Now done studies to show that the B117 version of the spike protein is still able to be recognized by the immunity induced by the vaccines that are available today. And that's because these vaccines have been developed against the full length spike protein. And so even though there are some changes between the B117 spike protein and the original SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, these antibodies that are developed from these vaccines are still able to recognize all of the other parts of the spike protein that have not changed. And this is something that is great news. It means that these vaccines are still effective against this new strain, B117. 
Ultimately, at the end of the day, B117 does have slightly different properties than previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. The most significant one is that B117 has been shown to be more transmissive than previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. Currently, the thought is that it is 50% more transmissive. That means that an individual who has been infected with the B117 strain will infect on average 50% more individuals than people who have been infected with previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. However, what we do know is that the cases that result from a B117 infection are no more severe than cases resulting from other strains of SARS-CoV-2. So that means that the COVID-19 cases that result, the severity of those symptoms are no different between B117 and previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. That's great news. Finally, there has been some data that has suggested that B117 may behave differently within children. Early on in December, we believed that perhaps B117 was able to more effectively infect children than previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. However, more recent data that has now been made available in January shows that B117 does not seem to infect children more than previous strains of SARS-CoV-2. So this is an area that we are still actively researching. Right now, it's very unclear. Does the B117 variant strain behave differently in children than previous versions of SARS-CoV-2? At the end of the day, what we really need to remember is that the B117 strain of SARS-CoV-2 is still a version of SARS-CoV-2. The mode of transmission is still the same. The reason that it's more transmissive is because this virus is able to more quickly bind to and effectively infect human cells. However, that means that you can still protect yourself from B117 by taking the same mitigation strategies that you've been using so far. That includes mask wearing, social distancing, washing your hands, and staying at home. All of these safety precautions are still just as effective against B117 as other strains of SARS-CoV-2. So at the end of the day, although we are watching B117, it is currently most predominantly circulating within the UK. There have been a handful of cases that have been identified within in the United States. It is more important than ever for us to continue to practice these good safety precautions. Wash your hands, wear a mask, maintain six feet distance from anybody not in your household, and stay at home as much as possible. By doing all of these things, it'll help to protect yourself, your family, and your community from SARS-CoV-2, including the B117 strain.